Hey everybody, happy Wednesday to everybody. I know it's late and I'll, it was supposed to start a little bit earlier, but we're gonna get things situated. Special guest, I've seen he was on the original thing I was gonna do for you guys, but he's here right now, so we're gonna get everything started. Hey David, hey Chris, hey Kamario. All right, I see you. Hey. hey, what's up? How are good. you? How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. Same here. You know I was going to start beating with you because you late. <laughs> Look, I, I'll explain to you later, but I, I I got my days mixed up. I was thinking Thursday. That's my fault, not yours. Okay. I, I guess I can forgive you then. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. We got everybody. The special guest you see right here, down here. Why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? <laughs> Say that again. Why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Okay. What up, y'all? My name is King David, actor, model, musician, and LGBT activist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you guys may know him as Winston on Triangle. And you guys Winston, believe it. You got, uh, 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 oh, damn. I'm slipping. I'm slipping. Kobe from Honest Men. Man, yep. Tell everybody. Else they may see you on because you know we see you with T.S. Madison. Yes, you see me with T.S. Madison. You see me as Kobe on Honest Men. You see me as Winston Corey on Triangle. And you see me as King David on quite a few places, including this music here. Mm hmm. His music that's coming out, out soon again. Yes, sir. You, know, you know, you got it. Round four, baby. Round four. Yep. So, how's everything been going with you overall? Overall, everything has been great. It's been blessed. How about you? Same here. What about with the new? With, since the new year started, anything that you've accomplished that you're like very excited to talk about, or just um, happy that it's already going down? So for me, for the new year, it's more of a continuation of um, energy. I ended the year with um, just really like deeply invested in the creation of my projects. Right, my project right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're about three quarters of the way done. Um, so I'm super excited to share that. It's going to be something that is quite unique to what I've created so far. Um, I've heard certain criticisms about my creation process as far as taking the Frank Ocean approach of kind of layering my sexuality and my music, making the he's, she's, and things like that. So um, I did my own personal development, you know, becoming more comfortable in my sexuality, uh, more free in my identity. And I'm just really excited to express that, which I've been doing and share that, excuse me, share my expression of that openness, this go around in music. Um, this is a dance album, which in itself is much freer and more movie, uh, more groovy. I've got Vogue beats, Deep House. I have um, some Baltimore Club. I got some drill. So like uh, um, a merging of lots of upbeat, up-tempo sounds um, juxtaposed with deep subject matter. Um, a lot of it is motivational at times. Some of it is introspective and vulnerable at times and almost exposing in a way that I've never really allowed myself to be so vulnerable on the project. Okay. That's good to hear. Yeah. So, but, where, but where are you born and raised at? West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Okay. Thank yeah. you for asking for Bel Air. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, so tell us how you, wh when did you first got into like the entertainment industry? Like what age did you start having the love for it? Not um, when you started at the beginning, what made you want to So I've been, in, I've been in the arts since I was about four or five years old, starting with Freedom Theater. Anybody from Philadelphia will be familiar with what that is, but it's a, a historically black theater. Um, from there, all throughout elementary, middle school, I was in um, theater and chorus and just creating music. At the time I was singing, Baby God had other plans. When his voice changed, that singing ability was shot. Um, so I kind of stepped away from the music creation process in my late teens to early 20s. Um, from there, got on Triangle around 24, 23, 24. 
uh, that was my my entertainment start as it related to my peers recognizing my face and name. Mm -hmm. um, got back into music at 25, going on 26. Put out my first project at 26. That was Price of a Crown, then and now. And I've been rocking and rolling ever since. Okay. Yeah. So since we get familiar with the music, we're going to get back to the music part a bit. Let's get to the acting. Because I know, like you said, we first knew you as Winston on Triangle. How did that process of you getting Triangle? Because like, uh, I know with Caesar and um, Bob, was it Ballroom Throwbacks? Yes. Shout how out to that, Caesar. How did you end up getting that opportunity? Um, so a good friend of mine, Thomas Mackey, and many of y'all are familiar with who he is. Um, he originally, excuse me, joined the cast. I saw what he was doing. I thought it was dope. And I was like, I want a piece of this. Um, so... I actually ran into Caesar, met him through a friend of mine named Jason, Jason Bowman, who was also on Triangle at one of Jason's events, and we just kind of clicked. So from there, uh, I reached out to him, asking him, like, you know, I, I'm interested in auditioning. He said, I actually have a role I've been trying to cast. You know, let me, send me a, uh, uh, you know, a uh, cast tape, and I'll see what you're working with. Um, my cast tape was fucking horrible. Let me just say that you're in French, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's that thing where like you're in front of a camera, you, you haven't done this before as far as just don't send it in a cast tape. And he had, he was like, send me another one, try one more time. So I took my deep breath, went back, recorded it. And he was like, you know what? I think we can do something. So initially he was just bringing me on for a small spot. I was supposed to just do a little cameo, maybe two episodes and be gone. So he gave me this description, you know, um, I want an American psycho meets this, meets that. So from how I understood Triangle to work, depending on the impact that you made when you came on the show, it created an opportunity for you to become a recurring character. So I had this pressure on me, like, I want to perform. Like, I want to do this. And I remember I was just sitting there on set nervous as hell all day long, looking at my lines, just kind of trying to get it right. And when we got on set and we said action, I just turned into Winston. And I remember Caesar looking at me like, where the fuck did this come from? Because this was not in the cast tape. And from there, he just encouraged me and was like, you really got something. And he wrote me in um, as a continued character for the rest of the show. And that's history. Interesting. Because, you know, a lot of people, if they don't know what Triangle's about, let them know what Triangle was about. So, tri is about. listen, Triangle Triangle was an era um, for those who were there as it happened. Like, it, it really was its own era and LGBT cinema. It was one of the first web series that people were becoming familiar with, kind of gave us a sense of something from our own community for us, by us to watch. Um, that wasn't solely sexual or this, it had, uh, you know, many dynamics to it. Um, but Triangle was, for those who don't know, um, a cross between gay, straight, and corporate America. It involved um, an elite family called the Davenports. They had a Fortune 500 company and it intersected with gays, for lack of better explanation. Yeah, because there was a lot of that going on. Shout out to the cast, because I met some Shout of the cast. Shout out to the cast. Because I know I met Kenyon, Christina, mm -hmm. uh, Jason, who you said, Jason Bowman. Mm -hmm. I know I met Jeffrey Eldon, Donnie yes. Smith. Yes. And they are hilarious. Just the way they are on camera. They're yeah. more nicer. The character, they know the characters how they are, but in real life, they're much more nicer in person. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we all much more nice in real life than our characters were. Yeah. So, what did you learn from that role of being Winston? Like you said, I know you had to do, prepare for the role, but what did you learn when it was that era of the show or the series, as I should say, the web series? Uh, uh, what did I learn? Well, for for sure, I learned to let go. Um. That character, a lot of times, Caesar would give me outlines. I might have 10 lines written on paper, and he wants a five-minute scene. He's going to give me the synopsis of everything that he wants. So that required a lot of ad-libbing. And for that character, he was kind of a zerk. So it required you to really let go and go there and detach yourself from that, that character themselves and just be them in the moment. So it really helped me develop that muscle of letting go. And in turn, as time went on, on life played out different things happen anxiety comes in you get new new uh fame so to speak working with t.s madison this and some of that free energy 
disappears and becomes subdued again. But even watching back and looking at those experiences, it re-helped me to let go, reminding myself of this is who you played on this show. This is what you did. You got it, G. You know, just be free. Do your thing. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those questions I always want to know. Yeah. Okay, now, when, now I know a lot of people know this when you played Kobe on Honest Man. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what made you get that role while okay. still playing at the same time? So I have, have had um, mm -hmm. just a major respect for Tyson and his creations in general. And I saw he put up a casting for that for the role of Kobe. And it was just like that opportunity of like, let's see, I just, you know, kind of threw out my, my one shot. I have been pretty selective about like, okay, I did Triangle. That was a dope role for me. It benefited me well. I mesh with that character. The next thing I want to do, I kind of want to juxtapose who I play and I want to do it with somebody who I, I trust their creative process to bring it to life. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I auditioned for that and it, it was pretty simple. It was a go. When once we started filming, you know, it was a thing of depending on how that does, we'll determine whether we renew it because we did it in half season increments. Um, but we will renew every half season and that check would increase to reflect, you know, okay, y'all bringing viewership, you're going to get paid more. So that in itself was its own motivator, like, all right, let's kill this. You know, me, Trip, Dante would come together and be like, let's go. We would, you know, just kind of get into that creative process and trying to bring those roles to life, trying to find the nuances of how we were going to shoot scenes. And, you know, it was really something special in itself. I still get messages of people being like, yo, I just found Honest Men, da-da-da-da-da. So, yeah. Okay. Now, since we went to the acting part, I know you're probably doing a lot more acting and everything. And I know, but you do doing your music, too. Mm -hmm. now, now, I know you brought up earlier, you know, earlier when he when we first got on, he brought up, you know, the projects he's done. What was the thinking process from when you did each pro um, project and to the upcoming project? Like you were saying, what makes um, each project different or make you feel like you have that purpose of stepping it up each time you deliver? Because, you know, sometimes you have some artists they put out projects, but it doesn't really mean nothing to them. What does that symbolize mm -hmm. to you as King David? Because we know you as David K. Price, but as the artist as King David, and as King yes. with E instead of the I. Mm -hmm. How yeah. do we let them know? KB. Um, so I really like to treat my albums as like a diary of uh, where I am in my creative process, where I am in life. So. Price of a Crown was representative of a mending of a period of heartbreak for me. It was kind of like this diary from my experience to somebody else's experience that would take them on a journey of all the different feelings that you feel from the anger to just like being in this place of being down and this place of starting to say, you know, oh, fuck that, I'm about to get up and in place moving forward. But all of it wrapped in love. Second project was Inner Space inner space again was about where I was in that moment but at this time it's no longer about being in a relationship it's in the space of after you've moved on from a relationship and you're in that inner space that in between space of love of life between your success and your failures um that was a much funkier I wanted to play with funkier sounds and start getting into my more nerd bag you know my more Buster, if you will, but just all those different influences who kind of take a different approach to their beat selection and their delivery. Um, moving forward, we got to fornication under consent of the king in a time where the idea of freedom and expression and sexuality was very important to me just for people to have that, you know, sex positive period. You know, I grew up on the Little Kims, the Foxies, the, the Yin Yangs, and I always was like, I want to be a part of this creation process, but I want to make something that feels organic and authentic to me. Uh, so my idea with that project was I want to create like this, this little encapsulated project that's strictly focused on how can I make music feel and sound like sex in a way that still feels like art. So that's what that was for me. It was all about, you know, creative and sexual freedom. Now, coming into this project, this, again, is a diary project. I think Fornication Under Consent of the King was the, the least of my diary-type albums. It was more like a capsule album. Um, but this one, this dance album, is 100% a diary album. It's my most vulnerable, most 
honest, transparent, even where it hurts, transparent, just like call the shit out as it is, um, which makes me really excited to share this because this album represents my own individual growth, my own individual journey with understanding myself. Um, and it's just so much on it that someone else will be able to identify with, will be able to pick themselves up with while, while having a dance beat to shake their ass to in the same moment. And I love that about it. I love it being able to be deep while being so fun at the same time. Yeah. Because yeah, I've known you for years already. He and I, we go way back. So it's just way a lot back. of this. I know some stuff out of everything. Yeah. So this is like a refreshing thing for me to hear this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of love in the comments, too. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all listening and tuning in. Guys, sorry, because I know we we're talking and everything, but he sees everything. Yeah. Now, since you since we went to the music and everything, let's go into um, the personal side of you, because you know oh. a lot of people are going to ask them these questions. So, you know, you know, I know some of these answers, but I'm just gonna. We'll go. Because the first thing it. I know, everybody's going to ask. Are you uh, are you in a relationship? I am. Are you in a relationship? Yes, happily. Yeah, you're gonna say I won't. Because you, just know, you're <laughs> you know it's gonna be the yeah. main thing I've had. Everybody saw the promo. They were asking me, "Is he is he with somebody?" Like, you yes. can ask them that question, but yes. I, you just answered it already. And out of all the projects you worked through, like Cat Project, you've done. My, pro my favorite would currently be Inner Space, but this new one's definitely going to knock Inner Space out of my favorite spot. Mm -hmm. What about the acting also? Um, For acting, ooh, I mean, do I want to pick Winston? I actually can't pick. I'll say both, and I'll explain why for each reason. Um, mm -hmm. I, I loved the uh, the freedom of playing Winston, just like getting to be this unhinged individual. It's like playing dress up as a kid, where you get to be somebody else, and the crazier of a character it gets to be, it's like it's literally like being a kid again. So I really loved Winston for that. Now, I enjoy playing Kobe because I enjoy having that opportunity to be so vulnerable as a character and really show emotional range outside of, like, rage and psychoticness as Winston. I mean, Winston had his moments, like, when he was grieving from uh, Ryan's character. Uh, but in general, he was a much more controlled, dominant uh, individual. He, he showed much less of his vulnerability. So I appreciate it in my second project, getting to show a different side of, you know, a different character. Okay. Really good to hear. Now, yeah. now you know, what, when it comes to the acting, because I know you did different um, scenes with different actors. Mm -hmm. How was it when you were on Triangle? How did it feel working with Christina Porter as Fallon? I mean... Me and Christina, just like the vibe, you know, you work with different people and y'all have a certain chemistry. Our chemistry really pushed each other to deliver our best work. Mm -hmm. So anytime that I was going to be in, Christi well, in the scene with Christina, I could count on something really good coming out of it. Because what I would have to feed off of and like what emotion is she putting forth for what is her expression or what is her energy, she was going to help me fall into the realness of the scene and we would really just go there i don't know if people remember you might k tooks but there was a bts that triangle put up years ago this was maybe even like scene season one or season two when me and christina were in the office and she finds out that me and ryan's character have been having an affair and yeah, that one. went off this is a scene where i'm crying she's crying and we have our falling out and they showed the bts of after and we were like stuck in cry mode because that's how real it got on set when we would go there um, trying to film those scenes. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we were now, able to really go. That means, Ryan, you guys, that's when I play Ashton. Now, how Ashton. was it working with him? Yes. How was it working with Ryan on that one? That was great. That was just, that was great. I mean, we got to take that journey together as far as, like, when Winston did show emotion, 
with that castmate, that was the first time you've seen it when you saw him be vulnerable or softer or show that he was a, a well-rounded three-dimensional character. He wasn't just crazy, but he also had feelings when he finally found somebody worth having them for. So that was great. And that bonded me and me and Ryan in a certain way. You know what I mean? Cool. Team Ashwin, y'all. You know, they, they got a new, a new little relationship later down the line, but we were the originals. It was Ashwin. Yeah, because one of my, I don't know if you remember one of my close friends, he used to, um, was a huge, he's a huge, he was a huge fan of the show. Mm -hmm. um, he went by Rick Holloway. Yes. I remember he used to, when he, because he's still one of my close friends, so he will always tell me, I like them together, Winston and Ashton together. And I don't know if you remember the stuff he used to do, like, on uh, YouTube. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's, I do. He, he did the videos and everything. One of my, was hilarious. I, to this day, I still have that in my phone. <laughs> that mashup he did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who was somebody that you didn't work with on this set of Triangle that you wish you would have had scenes with? Who didn't I work with that I wish I had scenes with? Hmm. Good question. I mean, I had scenes with most people. You know who I don't think I've ever had a scene with? Damo's character. I don't think you have. No. I don't think I have I... ever had a scene with Damo's character. Wait. Wait, 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 nope. wait, wait did you? I don't think so. I don't think you did. Mm -mm. But that would have been cool. You see Cafe Puppies put August. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Now, since we went into that right there, now also, you guys, besides him being an actor and a rapper and all the above, he also has his own podcast. Boom. Let's get into that. Watch everybody the name of it and where they can catch that at. Well, tell them about the show and then we'll tell them how to get to it. Okay. So it's, it's titled King David Presents the Red Pill, Red Pill Podcast. You can find it on YouTube by searching Red Pill po Podcast and King David. Um, you could also find it by going to my Instagram and clicking the link in my bio. So the reason behind that creation for me is I've always been invested, one, in healing and growing myself, and I've always been invested in the healing and growing of others. I kind of think they work in tandem. When you share a message that you're learning, it kind of like puts it in cement in a way where it reverberates back in your psyche. So I really just wanted to create a structured space. Like I've been doing lives and things like that for years and doing mm -hmm. positive messages at different points as King David and just kind of giving people enrichment or any information that I've come across or wisdom that I come across. But I wanted to create a structured platform for it and also create a space to share voices of other people who I thought had great things to say. So we touch on, on the topics that are often overlooked. We started with a series called Mask for Mask, M-A-S-K-E-D, um, mm -hmm. that really broke down the masculine experience of the LGBT presenting, the, ma the experience of the mask presenting LGBT men. We, episode one was Code Switch, where we talked about the code switching that happens in public spaces, whether it be straight spaces or gay spaces for mass presenting men. Episode two, we talked about love and sex and the unique challenges involved in that. In episode three, we talked about family and trauma. And I think that that was very helpful for a lot of people because it created a space where the conversation was centered around an experience that you often aren't talking about. You know, um, people tend to be very sensitive about the topic of masculinity as it relates to LGBT. It's often treated as like, um, I don't know, an insult or like, are we bringing this back into the conversation? So the fact that it was regarded, respected, and people felt that it was handled well. I was very, very happy to hear that. Um, episode four, if you haven't seen it, please check it out. We talked about um, body and self-image. That episode was titled Mirror, Mirror. Episode five was the Friends episode where we discussed friendship over dinner. Um, and episode six coming up will be Mask versus Femme, my first discussion segment of the show. And we'll sit with the panel of both masculine and feminine counterparts and juxtapose our viewpoints, our experiences, and challenge one another in a healthy way to kind of really get a healthy but challenging conversation going. So, 
Now, since I know you're still doing the podcast and I know you've been going back and forth with the production with the different episodes. Yeah. And everything drop in. Who is somebody that you would love to have on your podcast that you be like, okay, I would like to pick your brain a little bit, but at the same time, you know, it'll be good, like good, t like good um, content, yeah. but like good TV for everybody, like on you know, like on the YouTube and the social media sites and everything, who would be? You know who I actually want to have on my platform? Uh-huh. I, I want to have T.S. Madison on my platform. I, and I, I want to said. have a unique conversation with T.S. Madison on the platform. I want to go back into time and really discuss the dynamics of how we connected, um, what the public's perception of that was, what the reality of that was, and how that played out for each of us, how it affected each of us, and where we are now. Um, because for me, just to give a little bit of input, um, because it's something I've actually always wanted to voice, I actually got a very weird response from a lot of her fan base when I started doing that show, because a lot of them thought that I was mm -hmm. like the dude Dude, remember when Jeffree Star said, oh, I'm going with this dude, that slim, light-skinned black dude that ended up later dating uh, mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Lights? Like, people viewed our interaction with that level of, like, surface substance. Um, they looked at me like a user or like somebody that was, you know, riding on the coattails or being paid to be in a relationship with or benefiting in some way by that interaction when in truth, it was very far from that. She had reached out to me. She had this thing called, she would always say to her fan base that Bay is upstairs as a joke. Mm -hmm. So she wove it into the dynamic of the show that Bay finally came downstairs and I pop up. So where I was this very close friend of hers and the support system to her, I wasn't necessarily regarded by her fan base in the same way that somebody like Chi Chi or Craig or one of the, or Oliver, was received because they treated me kind of with a skepticism that I never deserved. You know, if they understood what it really was, then they would have treated me like one of her good friends who was good to her. Um, but that's something that I really want to sit down and have a wider conversation with her about and talk about that on a grand structure scale. And for the record, you guys, since he said that, I'm the one that brought that, asked him that question. Mm -hmm. Y'all give me some credit on that one right yeah. now because I've been that question for the longest <laughs> absolutely and since, and you I, you know i was gonna bring her up it's funny you brought that up so i don't really have to go into that one yeah that was one of the main questions i had people asking me also was talking about ps master but you've already did that mm -hmm. but like like you said in the, like you see in the conversation you don't have to explain yourself child but yeah yeah because i didn't really think of it like that because i know you i've known you for years <laughs> That's, that's why I thought it was. Just, I think because you guys had good chemistry. So it, Say it again. Them, I said you guys have good chemistry, yeah. so it came across that way to everybody. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, we we played it up, but in a playful way. Mm -hmm. It was just like people stopped getting the joke, um, and they they kind of shifted how they treated it. Um, yeah. Well, let everybody know you like you um like you a gym head too like everybody know you work good on your body and everything you be working out every day let them know that you because you're a personal trainer right at one point or still are i am a trainer yes i i am wits and nasm certified that's something i started doing when i was 22 years old i've been doing it since that makes 11 years now something that fitness in general is something I'm passionate about. Um, and more than the physical aspect of fitness, I'm really invested in the mental aspect and I've been bringing that into my platform a lot lately. Um, just being self full, um, making sure that your perspective of your body, your body image is based off of who you are, not being a thick dude trying to be a stick, not being a stick trying to be a thick dude, but really finding that balance of like working on yourself in love, not trying to escape yourself, but just be the best version of God, of what God made you to be. So, yeah. Good. Now you have a question from one of my good friends. Um, it was my friend Chris. He asked, have you ever traveled to Brazil? And if so, what was it like? Woo, woo. Yes, I have. I've been twice. I went for the new year of 2021 going into 2022 and i just went back 
for the new year of 2022 going into 2023. Um, Brazil was major for me. Um, I talked about this in a, a separate video briefly, but Brazil was important to me uh, for, my, for my growth because I got halfway across the globe and the people there are different. Um, by, by an example of why they're different is I've been out at parties twice during my first trip where some beautiful girl would be co-mingling at a gay event and see me and she speaks not a lick of English. And she's trying to give me a compliment, but I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. In two separate instances, those girls disappear and brought back a translator to reiterate what it was they were trying to say. And that energy of being so motivated just to give somebody else something was mm -hmm. unique. Because in America, baby, if you walk up to somebody and they only speak French and you was trying to give them a compliment, it's giving, okay, baby, listen, I tried, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but while I was out there, um, there was a lot of affirmation that I got about, you know, you're so perfect you're amazing you're beautiful you're this you're that and it's not that i think i'm ugly or had thought that i was ugly but i battled with being a slim dude and not being a thick dude and feeling like that made me not enough because i was slim so to be in that experience and to be so affirmed and told that exactly how i am i'm enough it really challenged me to say what am i looking at wrong what am, what am i thinking that's got me missing the mark so much that i could be having this 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 physical experience that other people respond to and yet i'm beating myself up so when i got back home from the trip 21 going into 2022 i really committed myself to making the change and my self-image and i carried that through the year and when i got back to brazil i felt like i showed up a different person so to be in the same places a year later going to the same parties and having such a different experience feeling so settled and comfortable and in my own skin um, it was almost like the pat on the back for my, my job well done, you know, when you finally get your sticker on your notebook or your A's on that report card. Um, and I was like, I got to share this with people. And that's where episode four, Mirror Mirror, comes from. It's just like, how many of us are already perfectly made and we're struggling to see ourselves the right way? I can't be the only one. You know, somebody else might call me ridiculous, but if I'm ridiculous, let this be an example to you of just how ridiculous you might be being to. You know what I mean? So let's let's get in our head. Let's leave those ideas of things we were told, things people told us that were not enough and start telling ourselves what we want to believe, you know, what we're committed to seeing. So, yeah. Good answer. Yeah. We got deep on that one. You know, listen, you know I guess deep. Oh, I know you guess deep. <laughs> well, the, some of the ones that don't know that I've known you for so long, they are yeah. starting to know now. Yeah. Now, since, like, because we're still talking about different questions, and I know people are asking different questions. What made you want to be vulnerable on the podcast compared to how you'd be vulnerable in the music and the acting? Um, <clears throat> well, I think that, in those types of arts, you you still get to sit behind the creation, you know? You're not live with it. You're not totally exposed, vulnerable, and present, like in someone's face. It's, it's pre-recorded both ways, you know, whether it's film or it's music. And I felt like a lot of people weren't totally aware of who I was, you know? Um, and this created this opportunity for one, me to flex my experience, my depth, as well as some of my wisdom and share it, um, but also create a, full, a, a more three-dimensional picture of who am I, you know? I'm not this cute dude with a nice body that, that rests on that. I'm far from that. I believe that my, my internal is way doper than my external. And I wanted to create a platform where I could share that for myself, I could share that for others that I also thought were dope and they had an internal that matched their external or exceeded their external. Um, and yeah, so, you know, here we are, we Red Pill Podcasting. Um, and it's just another thing that, that shows you a different dynamic of who I truly am. Um, you know, I'm a lover, I'm a carer, um, I'm down to earth. And these are things that I think people might, I know people would not just see by looking at me. Okay. Now, 
house is we basically answered a lot of does anybody else have any questions for um mr king david because i see anyone that had passed mm -hmm. by those miss stevie who you know styled by miss stevie i know she was mm -hmm. asking where do you see a character what up stevie you know, he got, since he got on uh, jabril yes or some like what want to answer that question what's the question no it was about uh your character winston and jabril uh what specifically or just in general no just uh where do you see your character with uh you know your character winston and jabril because i know they've had like a friend of me um relationship yeah that 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 relationship is really, really layered. It's been a whole lot of different places throughout the course of the show because from the historic point, um, me and Jabril, and it was revealed later, that history, but we grew up close. And, and you know, things just kind of got strained from jealousy. I, me and Fallon became good friends. Um, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken and forgive me if i'm wrong but i think there was a, a moment where there was something there between jabril's character and i when we were younger um but he really resented me my relationship with, with his father because i became the son his father never had although the truth was i was kind of his father's lap dog at the same time mm -hmm. so yeah and thank you i'm just 1031 i appreciate it yeah, your podcast is awesome because I've caught, I'm still behind us on a couple of them, but I've watched it. I was really impressed. Thank you. Maybe one of these days I could come on the sh on there too. Listen, there's space for everybody. I mean, we all have a voice. We all have something unique to share, and we want to highlight that. We want to, you know, bring unique experiences to the forefront. Yeah. If y'all want me to be on his podcast soon, L let us know. That let us know what you think about that one. Now, because I know we know a lot about the music and everything. Let's get into more like what you like and dislike. Well, not more the dislike, but like. Okay. We'll be like, what's your favorite food that we will be surprised to know about? Mm, I don't know if it's going to surprise you. It's a little niggerish. Um, but my favorite food is fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um. One of my favorite dishes is chicken parm since I was a kid. But for, for on that note, yeah, it's pretty simple. Okay. Fried chicken. Okay. Now, since we know you get into the music, who are some of your favorite artists of all genres? So, first things first, my, my most influential artist would be um, Andre 3000. I love everything about Andre 3000. I love his artistic freedom. I love how he goes against the grain. Um, I love that he challenged what masculinity looked like and represented. I love that he put out the love below. And it was just so, you know what I'm saying? Like, just different. I'm sorry. Somebody yeah, was I trying love to... <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry okay. about that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's my that's my my number one. After that would be um, I won't even say after that because it feels like an insult. No. But Aaliyah has been a really pivotal artist for me. Um, one of the dope things that I love about Aaliyah is the fact that she doesn't Aaliyah don't got the the, BB, the BBL body. Aaliyah was um, slam. Aaliyah was gorgeous, and Aaliyah didn't try to fit in as well like she just kind of moved to the beat of her own drum Aaliyah didn't try to be extra sexy and girly until she was ready to be extra sexy and girly and wanted to like show people that she's a woman um and we lost her way too soon because she was just at the precipice of all of her greatness like an amazing actress an amazing yeah. musician an amazing dancer and she had a heart of absolute gold like you don't you get talent every year good talent comes out every year but that wholesome pure quality of a star you very rarely see mm -hmm. you know um that spirit of a britney pre you know but the spirit of like a britney spears that innocence that just like love in your heart is what Aaliyah always has represented to me 
and I aspire to maintain as an as a creative in all endeavors. It's like when you meet me, I want you to feel like I'm a human being. I want you to feel like I gave you a moment and really like embraced you, you know? Um, so I love that about her. I carry that with me. Um, another major influence of mine would be Pharrell. Uh, the way that he played with sounds, the way that he challenged what hip hop looked like. Uh, he was my first artist that, cause I'm not a hood nigga, you know? Like I lived in the hood up until fifth grade and my mom didn't hardly let me go outside when I did. And then I was moved to the suburbs. So I had a more of a suburban experience. I couldn't relate to gun violence and you know, street music in that organic way. Um, so when artists like Pharrell came along, it gave me a place to identify. I call it suburban hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, same goes for, um, you got Pharrell, and then you have uh, Kanye West. I know now. <laughs> we can do that one. First of all, oh, first of all, Kanye wish, West. Wish, yes. Um, but first of all, let's wish Pharrell happy birthday because today, April 5th is actually his birthday. It's Pharrell's birthday? Yeah, he just turned today. Happy birthday, turned... Pharrell. Um, but yeah, Kanye West has been extremely influential for me. It's lyricism, much like Andre 3000. It's like the lyricism for me. I am hugely lyrical. And for anybody who has or from this point forward decides to go back and really dig into the lyricism of my projects, that's one of the places that I feel I really shine and I'm like really, really intent when I create. Um, I love anybody who was able to use their words and make them into poetry. So I love that about Kanye West's approach. I love the consciousness to his music while also being like marketable. So, yeah. And then of course my, my later, artist that I would add is a Frank Ocean. Same thing, the lyricism, the layering, the creativity, and how he even expressed himself. And for me, he became one of my favorite artists at a time that we weren't where we are today and just like standing in your truth and being. So he was like that cracked the door open of mm -hmm. like, oh wait, there's gay, there's gay representation for me. There's, there's masculine gay representation for me. There's somebody else that I can Bro. say, I can identify with within industry. So. Yeah. You got the comments saying, do you like Tupac? Yes. Um, I'm really influenced by Tupac, Tupac in sound and, our, and, and inflection of how he used his voice. Um, Tupac used his voice in a very interesting way. He did it very differently on diff different tracks, much like um, uh, like Andre 3000. If you listen to The Love Below, Andre 3000 mm -hmm. uses his a lot of different ways. But I, I love people who do that. You know, the Busters, the Missies, the Ludas. Um, these are all influences in mind for that reason. Like, just like playing around, trying things, not ever being in a box of what their creation process looks like, but always looking for something new to add mm -hmm. to that artillery while still maintaining their core identity as an artist. Okay. Look at my boy getting off the All right, righty. Um, well, anybody else have a question for uh, David? Cause you got my, you got one of my friend, one of my close friends, my artillery say, "Hey, King David." What up, friend? So this is just a good interview. I didn't expect it to go the way it did. Oh my gosh, really? Saying, "Do you like Popeye chicken?" <laughs> I love Popeye's chicken. That's my that's my go-to. If I'm going to have some fried chicken, I ain't going to churches or KFC. And KFC can kick a bucket because they got rid of them honey barbecue wings. Baby, ain't nothing for me over there. I make my chicken Popeye's at home because I am a chef, okay? So, yeah, I love Popeye's. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anybody else have any, anything else they want to ask on King David? Speak now, forever hold your peace. For real. At least until the next K Tips and King David interview. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all! I it had review in a space. He knows we yes, talked about it multiple times. Uh huh. And I appreciate you for it, for real. I mean, as a creative, especially an aspiring creative, you know, I don't have no label backhand. I don't have no, you know, millions of fans that when I drop something, it's just going to dig in and do that. You know. I really appreciate when somebody takes the time to dissect my art 
so that they can truly appreciate it for the creation that I made, you know, versus just hearing the beat and hearing the song and just listening to it straight through. There's a lot mm -hmm. that goes into it. There's everything you hear is a, de a decision and a choice. So yeah. I appreciate you. I think you cut out on me for a second. I know the daddy issues. I didn't expect that from you. I was like, Whoa, Say that again. where did this what come from? I'm Say, sorry, you, you, know, you did this, uh, uh, what is it, daddy issues track? Mm, yeah. No, da the song. Mm -hmm. daddy, no, it's a, yeah, daddy okay, issues. The song daddy issues. Daddy issues was. Was just what I wanted. I wanted that response. I wanted to put something that people didn't expect because there's a lot of people who um, may have just started paying attention to me as an artist on fornication under consent of the king simply because it did the numbers to give it some backing for people to take it more seriously. But I've always been making introspective music. I've always been that type of an artist. Fornication under consent of the king was the place I did it the least. But I wanted to create something, you know, especially with podcasting and all these things that I have going on, these themes are so relevant. The themes of growing up without a dad, the themes, the themes of childhood trauma and how these things really affect us. Um, so I really wanted to create a song that encapsulated that experience, whether you were straight, gay, if you were black or you came from poverty, then you would be able to connect to the themes of this song, you know? Okay. Have you ever thought about performing your music on the podcast? Or do you feel like that's a totally different direction that you want to um, go? So if I if I use my podcast for that, I really try not to make my podcast all about me. That's the first thing. Um, so I'm okay with, and then anybody who's watched the last two episodes, it, it does create a space, a structured space for me to promote my own music. So I have daddy issues in the promo at the beginning and end of, of those episodes and will continue to, to promote my music in the space of that platform. But I really want to keep the podcast focused and centered around what it is, which is um, en enriching the minds of others. So although that song is based on the same thing, I wouldn't necessarily do like a live, a tiny desk concert for that. I would create something else that may be a special where I would do that, you know? So. Okay. Now, here's the question I've been waiting to ask you on this one right here. Okay. Because I know we got into all of that. Where does King David, AKA David K. Price, see himself within the next, I would say, five years? Where I see myself in the next five years, um, I definitely see myself kind of, uh, building a media house of sorts. Um, I see myself using my gift of uh, cooking, um, catering service, food truck, restaurant. I, I lean away from the restaurant option just because that can be so involved um, and so high risk. But that's why on episode five, when we did the menu, the friendship episode, I wanted to create a space where I can showcase my ability as a cook and allow people to see what that looked like in real time and how people respond to eating my food. Because, it, you know, it really wasn't necessarily legitimized how great of a cook I was from Bish Less Dish because a lot of the cooking was layered in humor. Oh, is he using too much salt? Oh, is he burning this? You know, so it didn't necessarily allow people to leave with, oh, shit, David cooks, you know? Um, so this was a space I said, I want to establish the seriousness of my ability to cook so that when I move into that next phase and I'm saying, I'm starting this, I'm starting the catering business, come check out my food truck, people are already tapped into the idea. I've been waiting to try his food. I've been seeing how good it looks. So yeah, you'll definitely see me in five years building that. In five years as a creative, Lord willing, as a musician, baby, I'll be rocking in every major stage. I will be a household name of a LG, LGBT musician, someone who's able to reach people who are not just LGBT, but respected by my peers in all different industry. Okay. Okay. We can everybody be coming in the comments right there, showing you mad love. Got Ali Yankee showing you love. Thank you all. I appreciate you. What's up, Ali Yankee? Uh, what else were you saying? Tell everybody where they can um, follow you on all your social media. Okay. 
everyone you can follow me at king david's world twitter and facebook of course that is spelled k-b-n-g not k-i-n-g all right king david's world on all social media platforms you can follow me on youtube and subscribe like comment all that good stuff turn your notification bell on so when i create new content you're the first to see it that is youtube.com forward slash king david and on facebook if you want the inside scoop because that's where i get my inside scoop i'm a little bit more uh you know out there just more 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 candid rather on there that would be david k price on facebook gotcha it's that everybody loves the king. That's right, Dre Drizzy. <laughs> king <Kingdom. laughs> Now, you, you guys can follow. If you guys haven't followed me yet, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at K2X85, which you guys see up here. And then the K2X spot, you guys can follow that. That has its own Twitter page at K2X spot. And you could just, like I said, when you follow me on Instagram, the link will be of my YouTube channel. Right there, you can subscribe like he like he was saying. Subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to mine. Make Push sure that bell do. icon that way. Like he said, you'll be the first. Also have VIP access. So we're just saying that right there. And then you guys can see some of the stuff I've done with him with reviewing his music and me reviewing, you know, the past couple seasons of Triangle and other mm -hmm. stuff. That and way you guys can see, he's an excellent interviewer. He has amazing input. That's why anytime he wants to interview me, I'm going to make time for it because what's going to come out of the conversation is going to be substantial, not surface. Mm -hmm. I can do six interviews and talk about the same things, and then I come interview with K-Tux, and we get into the real. So make sure y'all follow him. Yeah. Okay. So like um, I said, I'm the Yankee of Mari. You have a question. What's your question for Mr. King Davis so we can wrap this up? Feel free to ask that question. So how you feel lately? So how you feeling now with this and everything? Is it what you wanted it to be? Um, you, You're saying just in general, my creative process, everything I got going no, on? Same like for, for us right now. Oh, I feel amazing about it, you know? And I, I see that the comments agree that they feel like this was an awesome interview. So I'm always honored to share about, space with you. Yeah. Because you guys know I want to ask the questions that you guys all want to know. What's the best advice you received? Good question before we wrap up. Best advice I received. I don't know what the best advice I received, but if the, the best nugget that I'm walking with is walking exactly who you are, have the awareness that anytime you shift yourself to fit into spaces, you shrink. And mm -hmm. when you shrink, you're doing the opposite of what is which, what you're trying to accomplish, which is to come across as magical. Your magic is in everything God already made you. So mm -hmm. your job is to fine tune that, tailor that into the creation you want to, you want to present to the world. So live in your own words, believe in yourself, challenge yourself in the spaces, maybe in your teens, 20s, and your childhood, people might have made fun of you for what made you different or made you unique. Um, it's time for you to reclaim that, reclaim that space, reclaim those ideas, and change what they believe. Change, what they Amen. change the belief of what they mean. Exactly. Teach yourself. And don't and also don't settle for, no, for anything don't, because don't. if you just settle for anything, you're not going to be happy. Because mm -hmm. I had to learn that I didn't settle for nothing, but I, I didn't never settle for nothing, but I always, like you did, create your own opportunities. Say, okay, you don't want to, um, you may not be ready for somebody like me to um, do this. I'm going to show you yeah. that I am. And Absolutely. That's, that's been my success with doing the K2 spot and everything. It's just being, being myself, just like with you being yourself. And yes, he does, like, because uh, I know Ali Yankee had asked, what's up with the podcast? The podcast is on his YouTube channel. We went to, I know you, you probably just came in a little bit late when we were just about to wrap up, but it's I'll have everything down in the description box so that way you guys can subscribe to his YouTube channel, his social media, so that way you guys don't have to worry. Just because if you came on here, I'll have everything written down. Because this while you guys are seeing this on Instagram, I'm going to have everything written down on YouTube because this will be on my YouTube channel also. So that way you guys can see King David, 
and get to know him more and check out his stuff. And that's all I have to say. So any last words you want to say, David? Um, whatever you do, believe in yourself. Don't expect it to be easy. Times of doubt are part of the process. Live in those moments. Put it in your, your creative process. Use it as fuel. And just know that as long as you keep going, you're going to be good. Um, I try to be, especially in this season, as honest and as vulnerable, even in those times of darkness, that somebody else might see when I'm struggling so that they can understand that I had to shake myself off and get the fuck up. You know, um, so just keep going, keep believing in yourself, give yourself grace in the moments that you're struggling to believe. But remember that a day before when you were in your bag, that that's what you want to hold on to and carry you through that season, that moment until you get back to where you want to in your head. All righty. Yeah. You heard it. All righty, guys. So that's it. So this is your boy, Kenneth, from the K2 Spot, signing off. And your boy down here, King David, a.k.a. David K. Price, signing off also. We'll see you guys on the next go-around. And it won't be right unless I say it. I'll you off after All this right. so we get off this. All right. So I got to say, have a blessed, positive, productive, and last but not least, encouraged evening. We'll talk to you soon. We'll talk to you guys soon. So bye, guys.